Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast, where it's our goal to help you become the best financial advisor possible and drive the positive evolution of financial advice. Hub24 is an ASX-listed company with over $15 billion funds under management and one of the fastest-growing platforms in the market. Neither a bank nor part of a bank, Hub24 focuses entirely on connecting advisors to a broad range of investment solutions for their clients. Discover why other advisors think Hub24 are the best in the market and access the benefits of choice and efficiency for you and your clients with their market-leaning managed portfolio solution. To find out more, visit hub24.com.au. G'day, g'day. How's it going? What do you know? Strike a like. Clayton here from XY Advisor, just with James Southo. What's happening, man? Mate, just, I was going to say, started the year off. I love the line I heard um, uh, somewhere on the socials about a, a couple of days ago. It said, um, now that I've, the trial period for 2020 is over, I, better, I guess I better go on with it. <laughs> the trial period. <laughs> You know, you have the 30 day trial period. Yeah, yeah. That's so. This was posted on like the 1st of February. So, the trial period for the year is over. Let's move on. I do like that. Um, yeah. So, mate, it's good to, it's good to get you in here. It's good to have you on. We've been trying for a while, haven't we? We have. Uh, it's because, uh, you're the best dressed, oldest millennial I've ever met in my life. (laughs) Because you're definitely you're, you're definitely a millennial. You just were born in the wrong generation. Yeah. Some people think the same thing. Whether they call it a an aging and a pausal deadbeat, I think they call it. Oh, I would never say that. Mostly because I don't know half those words. <laughs> well, I can interpret it for for you and the listener if you want to. Please. And I, I think anapausal, I think they call it is the mild form of menopause. Okay, so, so it's politically correct for me to say anapausal. Ah, if I had have said menopausal. The other then, one. Yeah, then it wouldn't have been. Understood. Yeah. Well, there you go. I learn something new every day. Trying to be inclusive and... <laughs> of course, naturally. You're a millennial. <laughs> and um, what is it? Uh, non-gender binary. That binary. Binary, that's the word. <laughs> you get there, mate. <laughs> hey, look. Hey, you're still not past the uh, trial period, right? No, I'm not. So... Um, we're in today because you're one of the most um, experienced people in financial services, first and foremost, that I get to speak to on a quasi-regular basis. Obviously, we're separated by uh, states. You're you're a Queenslander. Have you always been a Queenslander? Uh, yeah, I think I moved there in 1980 right. from Sydney, so I'm not sure if that classifies me as a Queenslander still or not. Mate, 1980? Yes. That, that means you, you were there. You did say I was older. <laughs> if you've been there since... Origin, the state of origin, you're definitely a Queenslander. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, I lived about a kilometre and a half from where the state of origin started, so I used to wander oh. down and just get a ticket at the gate and just wander in and sit, right, sit on the sideline. just for. That's just, sensational. Yeah. Um, when did you get into financial services? Uh, initially in 83. That's a, good, that's a great year. Great year. Was it a good year, was it? Ah, what happened, in, what happened in 83 that I ah, need to know about? Mate, Clayton? the uh, apparently- Other uh, than your birthday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's nothing else. <laughs> the uh, And I sold that business. Um, that was very much around insurance. Wow. Uh, multi-agency stuff. And then I sold that in na- around 1990. Interesting. Okay, so seven years. Yes. Cool. Is that seven years, maybe? Yeah. And also like pretty smart because, and I've had this discussion before- you, you, it's easy or well, not easy. It's still difficult, but there, there's a limit. There's almost like an upward limit of uh, revenue you can earn before you need to change your whole business. So you can earn up to about, and there's a lot of research around this, about the two million dollar revenue per year mark. And then if you if you try to go above that, um, it's like a whole barren wasteland all the way up to about ten million. And between two million and ten million many people never get there because it's very, 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 very difficult because you go from like morning huddles and, and you know, like having conversations with the person who sits next to you through to, hey, when did that staff member start? And then locking like the, the you know, the stationary cupboard and things like that. And the, the business changed so much between two and 10 million that it's almost worth never trying to take a business beyond that sort of handful of employees um, and under $2 million and then selling it because probably you could probably get a company to around or just under 2 mil on a more regular basis than 
and selling them each time than it would take for you to get to 2 million through the barren wasteland all the way up to 10 million to get the benefit on the other side. Sure. So is it was I mean was that probably wasn't front and center of your mind but is that sort of the strategy? Uh yeah well it's kind of you to think that I had a 2 million dollar business thing. Yeah. <laughs> well back in 1990 <laughs> mate so when a dollar was a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> the um the, yeah, so it was, you had to yeah, decide what you're going to do next and there was some things happening and I just wanted to get out and I did some marketing con- and management consultancy. Cool. I won't bore you with the details on that. Uh, and then I came back in in 1996 or 97. I can't actually remember the exact right. um, year. And then I've been in it ever since and sold two businesses during that time. Yeah, right. So, well, there you go. So you've been following sort of that idea. Um, I was, and the reason why it's front and center in my mind is actually discussing this exact strategy this morning that a financial planner took the business eventually to $15 million revenue, but it took them 15 years. Whereas to get to this sort of 2 million or equivalent stage back in the 90s, um, they actually were able to get there in a handful of years. And so it makes... It's actually not a bad strategy to commence mm. a business, get it to, you know, under two mil, sell it, start again. That's actually a relatively good strategy. So for I'd like you to say to- that was planned. <laughs> for you for you to have actually done it, it's like three times. That's yes. kind of cool. Yeah. And there's been other issues around the reason for selling. The, sure. The last one I sold is because I wanted to create a, um, a not a legacy, what do you call it? A, a, a estate planning, what do you call it? Uh, uh, age care. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we might take that bit out. Oh, I'm Clayton, my leave it. Depends what you... <laughs> Succession was the word I was after. Oh, right. Succession. Sorry, mate. Sorry. <laughs> so, success. Oh, so you were looking to. for someone to come in and purchase it from you over time? What, yeah, well, I wanted to create a succession plan because of obviously um, education frameworks that are coming through, etc. So keep myself go- keep myself compliant and educated till two thousand yes. twenty four, depending on what the what, what lands with regards to legislation. Yep, uh, and putting a um, a younger advisor in there, and we've got a great advisor. He's uh, you know he's got all the he ticks all the boxes. He's young, he's keen, he's married, young children, mortgage, uh, lives, <laughs> locked in, li- lives close to the office. <laughs> <You're> right, fantastic. <laughs> So, um, and there's very few advisors around where our practice now operates out of, which is at, um, uh, shout out Wellington, to Wellington Point. Woo. Uh, so yeah, it's a good timing from my point of view. And, um, so from that perspective, it's great that we can, um, uh, take my old business, yep. roll it into the accountancy firm that was my referral source, mm-hmm. which has t- turned out quite nicely now that the, the new... Yes, yes, of course. It limits their ability, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so from that point of view, we've now got a um, a wealth business inside the accountancy firm, which they own part of and I own part of. So Fantastic. they're not experienced in running a financial planning business. I think I kind of am. <laughs> You'd hope so. I hope so. Uh, so we're looking at creating efficiencies, working at that software, how that works, and... Constantly, my job, because I'm not doing day-to-day advice other than strategy stuff, I can look at, okay, where are our margins? What are we doing? How are we mm. going about it? And can yeah. we build a, bit, a, a decent business yes. from this? Yeah, so we want to take it to another level now. Sensational. Mm. I think cutting down or reducing expenses, that was a conversation I just had recently with a podcast the other day with uh, Dylan Martin. Yes. Um, that's one of his key sort of uh, plans, I guess, since purchasing, since becoming the succession plan himself, um, and he's really done a lot of work on cutting the fat out. Um, it's it's a very good strategy considering the 10x in costs for advice now, right? So, um, and and on that, so advice. It seems like there's never a week that's not interesting, and by that I mean there's something new, right? So Friedenberg, uh, I believe it was Friday last week. I'm not sure if you've if you've seen this. I know very little about it at this stage, but uh, basically they're receiving feedback for the next month on the following topics. And let let me know your thoughts. Um, no fees from a my super account to begin with, right? So, so no advice fees from a my super None. account. No. Mm-hmm. So that is interesting, right? So when they created the my super product, it very specifically had advice fees as one of the seven fees or whatever that yeah. could come. Now they're ceasing that. So my super product, um, it's looking like won't be able to receive an advice fee. Um, 
which pushes, you know, e- everyone into either non my super products or uh, out of, and, and, and of course there's going to be a bid issue there, right? Um, or it's charged out of pocket, right? Off the credit card, yeah. out of the bank account. Um, to me, this, this is worrying a lot of, of, of uh, worrying a lot of advisors. Um, Dylan, who I was speaking to, you mentioned sort of uh, the majority of his ongoing fees are received from superannuation, um, and so you know, ev- even even the most progressive advisors, if you want to call it that, would still have a huge chunk of their ongoing fees received from super. So this is. On top of everything else, just a new thing, just a new thing just for the week. The mix. Yeah, just a new thing. Was that part of the trial period as well? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, funnily enough, yeah, there's a 30 day um, feedback which is going on right now. And um, so, what what is that? What? How do you respond to something like that? Well, it's just another aspect of our business we have to uh, deal with on a day to day basis. You know, and I think I'm not sure what the government's trying to ch- to achieve. Whether they're still trying just to machinate, machinate, machinate. Don't know. It's another word. I don't know. Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Chew over. Yeah, right. I'll masticate. <laughs> help me hear. Help me hear, people. Uh, j- just trying to um, look like they're still doing stuff on the Royal Commission because they have. Why, I, did, why do more? There's already so much. Yeah, I know. But it, I, even the even the um, the press from the last what I've seen the last couple of days is saying, did the Royal Commission go far enough? So that, is this part of? Frydenberg showing that, you know, we haven't finished yet. This is just the start. So don't you worry too much. We're here. Wow. Maybe. I don't know. Did the Royal Commission do enough? Oh, my God. Let, everyone needs to calm down. Look, the industry needs to, especially the rules and regulations, no, just give it time. Like nothing that happens really rapidly works out well, right? So and we've, we've seen that, haven't we? Yeah, of course. I mean, we've seen it, but... Not not over the course of say financial services, but over like society for thousands of years, mm. we, you can kind of look back. And whenever rapid change comes in, it never ends well. So um, you, you, less grandstanding would be good. Um, no one's arguing with the intent, um, but perhaps uh, putting everything on the table at the same time. They're stretching, and then they're stretching to break, and. Um, I was actually going through the numbers in the UK from 2011 to 2000 and um, I think it was 14 or 15, uh, maybe in 16, and then since 2016 onwards, and it it dropped at 20%. 20% of the industry dropped when it went through the equivalent of, you know, FOFA and Royal Commission and all that sort of stuff, um, and 20% left, and now it's kind of just flatlined. It's gone up a little. Um, but depending on, on, on your, on your source of data, that is a little bit contradictory, but give or take that, that they've been, they've been a bit distracted too with Brexit as well too. To be, yeah. So it'd be interesting to see what the figures looked like had they not had that yeah, last three and a half years of distraction. Too. That's a really good point. That's a really good point. Um, but we're Australia, we've already seen, so I was looking at some advisor ratings data. Um, we've already seen from 25,000 down to 20,000. That was last year. So we've already had. A huge, huge, huge hit. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So we've had our twenty percent hit up front. It's gonna be really interesting to see what happens between uh you know, the end of the trial period as we're at right now, up until the end of December. So for this year, how many more people leave? Um, it's gonna give us a really good idea of how much more burden has been put on Australia compared to anywhere else in the world. Um and and we just need to stop for a second and say, well, I understand where we're trying to get to. I do. And I think you're going to find most financial planners agree with all of it. But, uh, how much, how, like literally, how much pressure, how much more pressure can advisors handle? I mean, with, with that horrible statistic that 16 people killed themselves last year. Mm. Um, and, and the mental health issue, uh, is, appalling as it is um how do we really want to keep pushing it and and then and I, we spoke before this podcast and mental health was sort of one of the things yeah that, that you wanted to get across and what's your view on all of this yeah well i think uh, I, i'm not alone in having a, a reasonably difficult 2019 and yeah. those that know me i know know what, what that means and it's you know you think you you're resilient and you try to keep 
um, your connections and your and your purpose and all that sort of stuff in focus. But um, then you get, as you just pointed out, another hit and another hit, and you try and put it into the background and be and use that resilience. Stoicism is that another word I can use? Yeah, I do know that one. <laughs> I was hoping you would. <laughs> High five. Um, and uh, but you know it, it can get wearing. So it's I've, on one on one hand I've got a business that I'm I'm excited about building, etc. On the other hand, last year, as you know, um, it's so sick that we wound up my online advisors passed our guys on to another another advice group, and uh, that was a difficult period. You know, coming through that because that was my plan and to keep that and build that for the next five years or more. But the the things that have changed, the the way the the government views things, the um, the way the interpretation of um, uh, or the way Fassi has come in and uh, started to rule things, it's kind of like it's it is a difficult part of a period of time, and we do have to be there for each other and look out, look after each other, and not just pick up the phone and say, "Oh well, it's all behind you now," which is what I had the other day. Um, oh, good, so it's all behind you, James. That's great. It's not like. No, it gets fucked. So it's not. But that's, totally. Uh, thanks for yeah. thanks for um, adding those words. And I did actually have a chomp at this particular person because it's kind of like that's easy. That's an easy road to do. We can't we can't keep doing that anymore. We need to be able to make sure if we are going to be there and present for those of us and probably all of us in one way or another, then we need to be there and present and expect that it's not just a short term thing that is a long term thing and that we are we are trying to look after each other, not bring each other down. Yes, one hundred percent. Um, despite the multiple different styles of business models that are in X, Y, um, we never, we never have a comment on it or never have a, take a position on it because every advisor is different. Um, every, every clientele is different. Um, and we want all of them to succeed. And it, one of the things that we don't really stand for is, oh, you're that style of advisor you know, therefore you don't deserve to be an advisor or, or, or any equivalent of or any variation of because that's, first of all, appalling. And second of all, we've got this industry has enough external pressure that um, having a go of Enormous at, external pressure. Yeah, yes. a, 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 that, that no other profession will ever go through. And, um, and the one thing that we can do is support one another. I, I just do not subscribe to the idea that um, one advisor would have a go at another. But I can say that I've seen largely positive commiseration, yeah. I guess, is probably the right way to put it. I think it's that it's not just that um, initial burst, if you know what I mean. So there's a longer, to me, it seems to be a longer period because it is this un, unrelenting movement that's that's there through all the different bodies that are trying to um, take bits of our lives and you know i don't want to turn this into a, a negative fix because i'm not negative about it. it's just it's just a discussion and um it's it, it just i i don't think the associations are doing enough you know they the, the types of groups that they've aligned themselves with and this is probably going to be a bit controversial but and i've spoken to um uh, an association ab about that i'm saying you know guys because i did actually I'll, hands up can i put my hand up here i actually did call one of those groups wow and made an appointment and um, asked if this person specialised in financial services and they were they specialised in child abuse. And I'm like, nah, I'm not done that. I haven't got the time, energy, effort to try and explain what's happening in this in this industry to be able to bring you to a spot point where you understand where I'm up to. So I just like, nah, I'm right. I'll just – so I've been to that appointment and I, I gave that feedback back and then, mm -hmm. blame me, did I think two other associations are now using the same group and they're not – they're a crisis management group that are designed to go in after, after um, cyclones and all those sorts of people. I don't think they're designed to to be able to help advisors. Now, the question, of course, then Clayton is, who is the group that can help us? Uh, those people that want to reach out, mm. you know, the, who is the group that can do that, or do you just go and you just go and source those elsewhere and hope that you find the right one that's that's right for you? Yeah. Um, because you know, there's no. You just look at America. Everyone has a counselor in America. Everyone has their 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 their, their coach or their person that they use as a sounding board to be able to keep them, you know, on track. So yeah. I think Australia is a bit um, um, uh, slow on the pickup in that area, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So I'd like to see the associations do more, not just 
put a band aid on it. This is kind of how I feel that they are at the moment. Yeah. If they want to, if they want to play in this space, they don't want to play in this space. That's fine. That's okay by me. But just don't pretend to play in this place. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a very tough thing. Um, one of the things that um, Sam Henderson came on to speak about. And I did listen to that one. Yeah, the the, yes. the main the main uh, reason why he came on and uh, was to talk about this exact thing. It was the shame um, of being, uh, uh, you know, he was, I guess, the front and center, the pinpoint that that that, that um, received the most flack, absolutely, um, out of all advisors. Um, and n- there's no need to try and go into any of what what happened for him to be there we we covered that in depth but um but he sort of came on and said that he how did he put it so uh Brene Brown um and it was about sort of him airing or or owning the shame to lower its um its power over him I guess I guess was his central message and um and yeah I, I, there's a part and there's a part of me that goes well it's it's I I'm a part of the um, the infrastructure of, with this podcast to ensure that advisors are hearing the fact that shame is being owned and publicly, you know, as you just said, you put your hand up, right? Yeah. Like, and and, and the amount of people that will be out there and be like, oh my god, you know, like James, like I, I'm sure you know a lot of people, and um and. It, that will in turn give strength to other advisors. Well, I hope it does, Clayton, yeah, because I think that, uh, yeah, this whole thing about shame, there, we're all in this together. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're serving high end advisors or low yeah. end, high end clients or low end clients. Um, we are doing our job and, and aiming for the doing the right thing by the client in the main. Most of us are trying to do that. Um, but, what I find about this industry is just fascinating, just and as you right, rightfully pointed out, I, I move around in a lot of different circles. Is there is this percentage of dick swingers to, <laughs> that move around in this industry? I know you weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> and you see them; they walk into the room, and they're they're John Wayne impersonation, and they're just having a lovely time. And you're like, "Oh, come on, bro! You're just in this business like the rest of us. You're not smarter. You're not, you know. You might think you are, but." If you just, you know, got your head um, down from wherever it is and realise that we're trying to all do all the right thing and your clients will always be your clients, my clients will always be my clients. Yeah. And um, it doesn't need to be like that, you know. And they're possibly the same people that was like pull other people apart. And and I don't think we've got that luxury anymore because we've got so much happening that we need to try and find other ways of be, be, being collaborative and to be able to um, work on these issues together. Uh, they're not going to go away. We have to deal with it. Let's let's move on. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the concept of uh, dragging down your peer is is in in this um, in this industry in this environment makes so little sense. Um, and and I'm sure but you've it, seen it, right? Yeah, I I have seen it, um, but I'm sort of in a bubble as well. Um, in that I get to see the best. Uh, I see a lot of the best. I see a lot of the people like yourself, mate, who are um, who are more giving and generous of their time and their, and and want others to succeed. And um, the people you know that that contribute on the platform are those that are really selflessly saying um, the only way that we're going to survive as a profession is if we all get better together. There is so little competition between one another, you would actually have to write a business plan to go after someone's... Oh, you would. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it, it, there's so few advisors, so many people that need advice um, that if we get better at explaining what it is that we do, delivering what it is that we do and getting better outcomes on what, on what we do, then um, the rest, the, the, there's just not a need for us to to speak badly about one another yeah. at all. And there's heaps, of, there's, there'll be more clients available and around absolutely in two or three years time, and I, don't, I think that number of twenty thousand is going to come down. Maybe you've heard the same thing. I think it's going to sit around fifteen thousand. So, yeah, and I'm not saying this year. I'm saying yeah. over the next year or so. Yeah, certainly as we lead up to the 2024, um, then we'll see some some um, some changes in the numbers, and it'll be interesting to see what how advisor ratings trackings are going on that. Um, yeah, on, on on how those numbers are going to 
I think one of the things that's keeping it low is the fact that we've got this professional year and no one really knows how to get new advisors in. So that that's yeah. contributed to the reduction as well. But once sort of more clarity comes out, um, I think we'll this year, I think we'll start seeing new advisors technically, even though they've probably been, they've done their 100 hours of professional year and they've probably been even seeing clients, you know, with the other advisor or whatever. But I, the methodology for how to get a new advisor on the financial advisor register isn't, isn't clear yet, which well, strangely enough. Yeah, that and also the, those people need, still need to do their ethics exam. Oh, there's that as well. Yes, exam. yes, so yes. So there's yes. two things there. It's that those people that either couldn't be fagged or just yeah. didn't get over the line for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, they could, I'm not, I'm not sure what those numbers are going to look like. Yeah. And then, as you say, you've got the, the professional year guys that, um, that, uh, how do you manage those and bring those? through yeah, yeah. It, the first year exam is a very interesting one whereas we've got you know an 85 percent pass rate or whatever that 15 percent, i knew i know a few people in that 15 percent um would not have guessed if i'm being honest that they would be in the 15 percent now so, so one or two things is my um is my understanding of their intelligence incorrect or is it what i'm hearing which is you get out of the exam you got no idea if you passed or not are the questions such as that there are potentially more than one correct answer, but only one's getting answered as correct? So then... So it, how do we find all that out? That's the question. Oh, man, absolutely. Um, so for the 15% of advisors that didn't pass on their first time, that's kind of a substantially high enough number to not feel too bad, if that makes sense. Yeah, and then do the conspiracy theory and you say, well, that's, is that being designed or is it just so happens? I or? think it's probably a lack of design. Right. If I was to take a stab, um, if you think about how impossible it is for someone to come into financial advice, whenever someone makes a product or starts a company to come into financial advice and they don't have a background in it, I just think, well, good luck. Yeah. You know, um, because if, if you think about it, even, you know, Mark Boris, one of the most successful businessmen in Australia. Sure. I mean, Yellow Brick Road has mm. completely capitulated. Yeah. I mean, it's a that, share price of two cents or something. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And, and I mean, if someone, he's one of the most successful financial services, especially financial services businessmen that Australia has ever had. Yeah. And not even he could. And he's brought in close. talent upon talent upon talent to try and get that. Ab- side of the business absolutely now so if we don't so i don't know who's writing this test but i can guarantee you if that's not someone from a history of financial planning they just don't understand it it's so weird but it's so true well there's two things there's the writing of the test and then there's the marking of the test so you so is is the test being written the right way yes no or maybe who knows and then how is it being marked in relation to the to the what they're what they're wanting to achieve yeah. with the with the res- with the um, with the results. Yeah, that's a really yeah. good point. So I don't know, but you're right. It's not an easy industry. Is it? You, you wake up one morning and say, "I'm going to be in the financial services industry." Well, best of luck with that, sunshine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let yeah. me know how that goes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you if you come wading into this with uh, with with a checkbook and not much else, yeah, it, it's not going to end up too well. But I will say that some technology companies are certainly trying. And I know tech is one of those topics that uh, very much interests you. Now, so you've got everything from Salesforce, one of the biggest tech companies in the world. It's it's one of the five now, isn't it? Absolutely. It's so so big that they offer what's called not a software as a service, but but a pass, a platform as a service. So as a platform as a service, you've got AWS, you've got Microsoft, Salesforce is up there. Salesforce mm-hmm. is one of these one of these companies that are now you can build your you can build your SaaS on using uh, Salesforce as your code base and not have to go off to Amazon or yes, Microsoft. exactly, which yeah. which is crazy, right? So yeah. if you go the biggest companies in the world, Salesforce are now uh, are, are one of, and they have a financial services cloud. Right, so yes. there, so so you, you've got as big as Salesforce, down to, you know, mm. yeah, like Choose tiny them, little yes. companies. You know, uh, let's let's call it Adrian Patty <laughs> with Advice Revolution. <laughs> God he, love you, Adrian. Yeah, God love you, mate. God loves a tryer. Yeah. Um, and so you know, a, an unfunded 
um, you know, three year company where they've just been developing tech with their own. So, so they're using their own funding, right? So you've got everything from Adrian mm. Patty up, up to, to Salesforce, Salesforce, right? And everything in between. And you've got levels of success. And one of the things when, when I was doing consulting and advisor ratings is I saw the NPS scores for um, tech all sucked across the board. Not a not a financial planner was happy with tech. None of them. No. It, it, there wasn't like a standout. And I, I do understand it's because rules and regulations change so much quicker than the ability for tech to keep up. So I, I understand the concept. Um, but with all that said, what's your current tech stack? Where do you see efficiencies and where do you see the future? Yeah. I, just, I think the CRM part is an easy bit even though some people still, still seem to get that wrong. But it seems to be name, address, phone, number, date of birth. You know, it's a good start for CRM, don't you think? Yeah. Um, but even some people seem to get that wrong, and I won't mention names. It took them a while to get there. I'd like to thank <laughs> insert name here. Um, we went over through that um, because we've been waiting to see what some of these new players, you know, you've got your C-Cubes, you've got your um, IntelliFlows, you've got your advisor intelligence, um, although my wife thinks that's an oxymoron to have advisor and intelligence in the same sentence. Ooh, <laughs> I know, cruel, burn, cruel. cruel. <laughs> um, and, and obviously the other, the other main players, Advisor Logic's now gone to uh, Morningstar. Morningstar. Uh, Midwinter's been purchased by... Can't remember the name. Yeah. Um, and so we looked at it and, and we wanted to be able to keep moving. So again, because I've employed advisors and what we did, if, if you want me to mention who we, who we, who we Mate, landed please, on. please, yeah. Um, we, la- we landed on Midwinter. Cool. Hello, Julian. How are you? Um, Julian's a good guy. Yeah. Uh, and that has not been without its pain. So we're actually going through that now because the, as I said, the CRM is the easy bit. It's trying to get the output in an efficient way. Totally. And get those, get that da- that information that you want out, reviewed, and to the client quickly is what I'm now spending a lot of time with my guys trying Mate. to get that right. I mean, just like, just, 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 isn't that a fucking surprise? <laughs> oh, my God. But <laughs> even me trying to work on this. I mean, who who who's doing it well? I, I just don't know who's doing it well for, for – the out, the people that are doing the outsourcing, uh, you know, I can see that working well. I don't know the people who are doing the automation well. No, and I think those that that seems to do it are bringing those other tech people in to to employ them, put them in the office, or yeah. have them on contract, or whatever yeah. it might be. So to try and do it on your own, unless you do have a good understanding of tech by itself, oh, then if you just say, "Oh, it's a piece of software, I'll take that," thanks, then it's just going to be a struggle. And I don't think you'll ever get on top of it. Yeah, advisors expect it to be like Microsoft Word, whereas it's it's no. more like MS DOS. That's right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you, you, and other legacies behind yeah, that, probably. Exactly. <laughs> Whatever that legacy might be, C prompt. That's what it was. C prompt. Yes. Oh my goodness! <laughs> was that on the Amiga? Oh, uh, dear. Um, so, yeah. If unless you get, even understand the the whole thing where it's come along to. To be able to know that the, the the output is not going to give you what you need, so how do you review, create that, or what money do you need to spend to be able to do that? You can get it done, but it's going to cost you a lot of money. A lot of money. That's right, and that then adds to the, the adds to the time that we're all having to spend now with to make sure we we, we comply with with bid, um, and uh, to to be able to give the the client the right information, make sure because it's, it's the old thing, it's not in the SOA, it didn't happen. Yeah, um, and that the, yeah, so how they manage all that tech, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's still as is with those three new players coming through. And I think there's someone else coming through. Um, there's agent stuff around the, the fact find. There's Prime Solve. There's Nod. And there's mm-hmm. two or three others that are all um, getting yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. Nod, Nod's definitely an interesting one. They've expanded out of just financial services, I believe. They're, they're now dealing with law and things like that. If there's an yeah, automatic I'm document creation, yes. yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, even law, to a certain degree, actually, probably is easier in some way because well, precedent uh, Absolutely, equals, yeah, equals yeah. Result, it's yeah. probably a, a more accurate use mm. of the AI. Um, My Prosperity has a has a of course, free fact yes. find tool. Map My Plan, we can yeah. keep naming them, yeah. Well, Map My Plan's a very interesting one. Um, and I've spoken about them before because they operate – um, without advisors, they they operated that they, they launched with the idea of working with advisors because um, Paul Feeney, the, the the founder CEO, he's a former advisor, um, 
and yet planners were just like, nah, not interested. Um, and so they've ended up as a uh, very much a, a corporate benefit tool and huge companies are working with them, right? Yes. And so they're able to offer uh, simple SOAs for the equivalent of, you know, like 20 or 30 bucks a year, right? Yes. Like really, really, really cheap, um, which they're, is a whole interesting thing. They're interested in the fact that um, – I think Matt, my plan, correct me if I'm wrong, don't quite understand what the, the difference between general advice and personal advice. So they're creating personal advice documentation for general advice. Correct. Yeah. Um, per, it's personalised general, general advice. advice yes. <laughs> uh, and I'm not sure how that's going to go, how that's going to play out with regards to. Well, it is delivered in an SOA. Yeah. Yeah. It's delivered. At, so, so even in its most harsh interpretation it's um and i well, the guess the question i ask is why, is it, why isn't it just a strategy paper because it's theoretically it's not really a statement of yeah advice. that's a that's it's, a really good a point it's, yeah it's a really good point um because they don't mention product as well that's right um i don't know i i, I mean paul's a really bright guy so whatever yeah, the is. reason yeah. is uh I, i'm sure and he, peter you know, mccarthy from um goodness gracious my, yeah my prosperity as well they're smart guys yeah expanding into the uk oh um, are they yeah big yeah. expansion into the uk we're actually trying to um follow him uh, X Y is expanding into the UK this ah, year as well. Yeah, let's polish up on your English, <laughs> please. Um, uh, can we mention the other tech that, we're, that please, with yeah, regards yeah. to CPD? Absolutely, because one of my roles is in regards to CPD. I just wanted to just mention that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because uh, that's another thing that's changing. You know, up, yeah. to, up till now we've just had one one person in the marketplace. Yep, and now there's a couple of new players mm-hmm. um and full disclosure i'm involved with um with caddy the yep. um uh, which we call the netflix of cpd mm-hmm. uh, but there's also is it aspire inspire i'd get that wrong i think it's called inspire with financial standard so they've they've oh, actually right. re- redone their stack now and um their their user interface etc so but it's like anything that they're, they're purely doing um, financial standard stuff. Oh, right. So you read financial standard articles, you get CBD points. Inside, yes. Huh. So you can oh, that's, subscribe to that. That's their, good. Yeah. So there's financial standard now starting to make a, make a movement in this area. Yep. Um, we've got the, the seasoned player. Yeah. Kaplan. <laughs> Kaplan. Kaplan. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you very much. You can mention that. Um, <laughs> and then we've got also, um, Caddy. So Caddy's um, been around. I've been involved with him for the last two years. Um, uh, yeah, right. uh, a brand ambassador. So I go around and talk with people about yep. what I, why I like. Uh, caddy and the reason why I like caddy is we can put things like XY Advisor podcast in there. People yeah, can get um, yeah. get can get micro CPD points just to listen to your yours and my voice. Very good. Yeah, this, um, that's what's what's this podcast worth? You reckon half a point? Twenty. Twenty. <laughs> strategy. Twenty all in strategy. Yeah, try that. Um, run it by your your <laughs> AFSL and see how it goes. Uh, yeah. So so we can just bring in information and PDFs and videos from all over the place so people can get. Um, CBD points for just doing your everyday stuff that they're doing anyway, because the, the people are listening to your podcast but getting no no innovative commons credit for yeah, it. Yeah, actually, we started mentioning that at the end of all our podcasts. We go, hey, go to Caddy to get CBDs. Yeah. And then if you go to Caddy via XY Plus, you get a 20% discount, which is pretty cool. Um, what other tech are you using? So you've got CPD, so, uh, sorry, um, CRM. Yes. Too many acronyms. Yes, there is. You got, you got your CRM, which you're using as midwinter. Yes. What are you plugging in around it? Uh, well, that's what we're building on now for this year because mm-hmm. we, we only, only um, uh, merged our businesses with the accountancy firm mid last year. So it was very much about getting that right yep. up till Christmas. And now uh, we are looking at what do we add in? Do we add a Power planning service. Do we add in other tech? Maybe looking at, looking at Patty's um, business. Yeah, yeah. So, and is that kind of credit? Is that going to be an efficient way of doing it? So, if it's not going to add or reduce time, yeah, it ain't going in. No, I understand. You know? It's uh, so that's that's kind of where we're um, uh, looking at, and we are playing a little bit with with Prime Solve. Um, What's that? Prime Solve is a kind of like a probability engine, so you can put a whole range of it's goals based, but a whole range. Um, goals in and it'll work out the probability of that and you can and then you can discuss that those goals with the clients right and i'm maybe trying to think uh tim tim hall's the guy that's okay. involved in that yes cool so we've been um helping helping them out a bit to see where that goes we're not sure where it's going to go it's like all this tech stuff that's just long tail mate it's huge yeah. it is huge 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 and um you know you've got guys like vince scully 
Yes. Right? Sherpa. Sherpa, yep. Um, he, I don't know where he is there, what, what, he's do, what his software is doing these days. Well, he, man, he went through and built out a massive, we interviewed him, a massive um, amount of, um, you know, if, when functions. And, and he, he's probably, he's the master of automation. So if there's a Another guy. Another smart man. Another oh, smart my man. God. Like if there's anyone that understands this better than anyone else, it is, it's definitely him. And he, he solved the problem. He, I, know, I know he spent a lot of time, effort, and focus on achieving that. Um, and that's his entire business model. So, yeah, it'd be, actually be good to catch up with him again and yeah. see how it's turned out. Yeah. See where, where, where his um, software is up to. Yeah. But they change. So, you know, that's the old thing about test, measure, pivot. I know, yeah. I know. That's that. Hence why we, you know, X Y building the platform. We built one for two years and then canned it in two weeks because it sucked. And then I had, did the deal with the Silicon Valley guys, and um, that was just outsourcing was the right decision, one hundred percent. Until such time as we get to a point that uh, we want to take that on again, yes. um, it's it works really well for us. But the question I think a lot of advisors need to ask themselves is how much of their time, effort, and focus do they want to spend on automation? How much or is is simply outsourcing a better option? You know what I mean? Is is the Philippines a better option? Is is it worth tackling the tech, or is it worth having a daily huddle with it with your staff overseas who are doing it hands on? Well, I've done both, so. Mm, what do you prefer? So, well, and I've had the Philippines and the daily huddle with the Philippines. And, um, we had three or four, I can't remember now, um, at one stage. And it's a matter of trying to get the right people. Yes. Um, and keeping them on focus. Who did you use? to? Did you find no, the people that you No, no, no. That was through Danny Elk. Neil was in at Five Elk. Understood. Yes. And do they do they train their staff in what it means to be a financial services uh, employee? Yes. Interesting. Yes. Okay, cool. And the business was reasonably young when we were using Five Elk. So I, right. think, I think Danielle's um, learned a few things since then. Of course. Um, and um, they go through, I think it's like a... Four or six week training. Yeah, how to log into different um, software, etc., um, to get the data out that you want to get out. If you're trying to do reviews and all those sorts of things, so uh, would I would I do that again? I would just purely for admin tasks. I yes. wouldn't do it for any 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 advice task again. Would, would, would you include a statement of advice in admin? No. Interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. And I think it's even harder now with with um, getting. External people, if they're not in the minutiae of advice today, trying to get them to understand about what is best interest duty and what isn't best interest, what's in scope, what's out of scope. Have you covered all the goals? Have you covered everything off inside the SOA? So if yeah. you did mention one thing, why is it not mentioned again? And, yeah. And picking that up where I think somebody who's, who's living and breathing at Paraplan is in Australia. Um, and we've, we've started to talk to a couple now about how what that looks like. Um, and... Uh, they understand a bit more about scope and you know making sure that it, it flows and is, yeah is there. so uh, yeah well even outsourcing onshore like yeah. in Australia is certainly outsourcing yeah, yeah absolutely um, yeah and and there's many um, many good advisors that have their own power planning um, businesses in Australia one of the interesting things is they're getting harder and harder to find because of the level of uh, income they can earn as a SOA checker, yes. you know, with with um, with you know Deloitte and whatnot. I can't. What, what are they calling it? Um, the remediation. Yes, the remediation. You know, it's kind of it's certainly triple figures, and you just have to turn up and get told what to do, and then walk out. And there's those files for the day. Correct. And go know. home at five o'clock, yeah. and you don't have to think about it, right? Mm. So there's an appeal. There's an certainly an appeal there, but a, a lot of the uh, people that were delivering SOAs have gone over and done that. So it's, it does make it a little bit more difficult, but that's just a seasonal thing. I mean, certainly the question on whether to outsource, whether to do internal with your own staff, how much effort you're going to put that's on tech. How big do you need to be to get a, a full-time power planner? Totally. Are they going to be a combination of admin versus yeah. um, um, advice or SOA yeah. building? So they're the things that we're just looking at at the moment. So uh, I asked a question to somebody it's around 50% of advice firms have some form of power planning and mm-hmm. about 50% of those have also are admin. 
So our, our admin, admin and SOI. Yeah. Well, naturally, that's my uh, my power planners were always my admin as well. Yes. Um, I was never large enough to, although I had sort of outsourced some stuff and in you know, but certainly Australia. Um, but then other people who have been able to grow larger companies than what I have and they would have specialized people. So, yeah, it makes kind of sense, about 50%. And then of that, 50% mm. um, are doing admin as well. No, the question is then what are the other 50% doing? Well, uh, outsourcing, <laughs> I guess. Well, unless they do their own plans. Do their own, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, well, actually, some, especially if you've gone through the power planning route, which I did, um, but I didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> I sort of got out of power planning. I was like, oh, never again. It was like when I was doing accounting. You know, I did tax accounting for three years, but my God, I can't even do my best. Like, yes. any headache. So yeah. it depends if you've got the ability um, and the desire, but it's just a, it's a case of, um, you know, want, need. Well, I suppose the thing is an advisor is somewhere between 300 and 350 an hour. Yeah. Give yeah. or take. Give or take. Um, if you can find people that are equally as skilled at doing an SOA, for significantly less than that. Yeah. You know? Oh, no, 100%. So it's kind of like it doesn't really how big or how small you are, particularly how small you are. You, you've you got to start looking at the time you're, you're taking to build. Your SOA. Well, and an SOA today does take more time. Oh, man, an SOA definitely, which is why I think in this new environment, many advisors are choosing not to bring on new clients. At the moment, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's almost like let's just handle current. Or even take clients off. They're taking Yes. Which is what we've done. We've, yeah. We've, if anybody that doesn't fit in a certain framework, we've said, you know, thank you very much. 100%. We're bringing our client base down yeah, to yeah, more, yeah. the more workable group. Yeah, yeah, if you're under a certain amount of revenue per year, despite how much I like her, uh, helping you, there's just no way that the, the risk that keeping you as a client is way Absolutely. more than the revenue I'm earning. So, therefore, it's like, what do you do? And so, yeah, it's, it's kind of a sad thing. I think this year is going to be – Taking that bottom ten to fifteen percent of the company, and uh, politely moving them on as clients, um, probably not taking on a hell of a lot of new uh, clients unless you get your um, unless you get yourself in order where you're not um, charging fees from the super account. You know, you're doing things super progressive yeah, strategy type if, stuff. If, yes. if you can get to that stage, one of the things that um, I've been challenging myself on were, is. If I was to start a financial planning business today, what what would my process look like? And I think I would literally, the first year, um, it would be an education and goals discovery process before a statement of advice would ever even exist. So it would almost be like the first year is to, edu- is, is to find out about you, you to find out about financial advice, and then... At the, at the end of the year, do you want to continue? Or in that case, you know what needs to happen. I know about you in order to make it happen. Then we'll do the statement of advice. Whereas my whole business was, let's meet a couple of times. Here's your advice document. Yes. And then I'll spend the next few years explaining to you what the what – Reminding the advice, you why we're doing yeah, things we're doing. Yeah, which makes no sense, right? So it's like getting married and then getting to know the person later. So what I would do would be to spend that first year, and I think that kind of helps with – like no locking, you know, this whole idea of one-year renewals. So the client comes on, build it, spend that first year, spend, it's not going to be a huge amount of money, whatever your upfront fee for the year is, uh, not including an SOA production. Let's catch up a handful of times. I want to know about you. You need to know about it, you know, get educated on what advice is. And then at the end of that point, yeah, I kind of, you know, as far as best interest, duty is concerned. I'm like, I mean, my goodness, as far as, as far as ethical is concerned, my goodness, you know, this is a well-educated clients entering into advice in it. You know, I think it sets sort of the the frame for a, a, a piece of advice and then spending that year sort of implementing the first part of that advice and then the next year implementing the second. And, and then, you know, every couple of years you, you do need to pivot because things change and it just – I, you lose your job or whatever Correct. You, start, yes. you get married, get you divorced, have a family, you, yes. yeah, one way or the other. Things change. And um, I think, at least theoretically, I've solved in my mind well, that, what I would do. Yeah, well, I think that comes back, back to what accounts do, and that is charge an hourly rate. So you, you're, you are, you're taking up this amount of time. Yeah. We're adding value. Yeah. You're, you're learning, which is value as well. Yes. Um, a and, huge amount of value. Yeah, and and – um, if you if you're not talking about product and there's no urgency about talking about product, then yeah. you could actually recoup via an hourly rate, and you probably end up 
earning more. I know. Just completely removing yes. um, additional costs that come in with the advice process. And people know what they're paying for too, Clayton. Don't Absolutely. They? They, they've got a very, you spend an hour with me, here's yeah. my invoice. Yeah. I, see, I, I think I don't think I'd go to the hourly um, invoice. I think I still would do um, outcomes-orientated invoice, but I, I think I could sort of justify it with hours right. if that makes sense. Yeah, if you needed to, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and this is where I think – the accountants are starting to have this discussion about recovery rates and how much, you know, that an advisor can charge or and do they charge for outcomes or do they charge for time, et cetera. And I think that we're going to see a bit more of um, charging for time, but a proper but a proper charge. We're not talking about 150 yeah. bucks an hour. We're talking yeah, about yeah, proper yeah. charging for time, like, yeah. like any senior person inside a law firm or an accountancy firm would do. Yes. And then add those other people who are doing work on top of that. So you saw... Me for an hour and my staff did this for an hour. Therefore, that rate in our practice is this. Yeah. Um, but people know that because there's, there's um, paperwork to be able to show what, what that is. Yeah. yeah. It is um it is an interesting thing in, in terms of how things are changing. Yes. How advice is evolving, um, the additional requirements that advisors are facing, the uh, the burdens that are being suffered to to be able to have conversations like this with you where you've gone through a tough 2019 but you're still here in front of me wanting to sort of share a bit about your journey and some some things about how you're you're making your professional life better it's inspiring mate oh thank you so thank you so much for sort of taking your time out of your day i believe i'll be receiving that invoice you mentioned per hour uh hopefully no other staff was you involved did buy me a coffee to be fair <laughs> But, uh, but I am a sucker for a, for a coffee. <laughs> Mate, thank you so much for coming on. Um, for any advisors that want to reach out for any number of reasons, how would what's the best way to get in contact with you? Uh, well, probably by my mobile. or They'll be in the show notes if sure. you want to. Yeah, yeah, that's the easiest way. Cool. Um, or an email address I'll, I'll leave there. Excellent. Yeah. Awesome, mate. Well, thank you for coming on. My pleasure. Thanks, Brad.